GraphQL doesn't really require any sort of fetching library or mechanism. It can work using plain old fetch, as we've seen in a previous video. One of the main reasons we opt to use a GraphQL client is mostly because how it handles caching. It can automatically invalidate data across its cache, so it no longer needs to refetch that data if it already knows what that is. Today we'll be using SWR to enhance our application. This is a popular data fetching library that works with React, and it's derived from the stale while revalidate concept. SWR isn't a dedicated GraphQL client, so it's not going to be as sophisticated as some of the others, but you can get pretty far by all of the mechanics that this exposes. One of the greatest things of SWR is that it makes sure that your data is automatically up to date. Here I have a simple store application where we can go to a product and we can add a product to the cart. We can also go to the cart and we'll be able to remove items as they're added. To get started, let's install SWR from NPM. We'll also install GraphQL request and GraphQL itself. We could just use fetch to make a request to our API, but I'm going to use GraphQL request because it automatically handles errors, JSON parsing and more. This is what our application looks like right now. We have some data which contains all of our products. So that we can add these products to a cart, let's go ahead and create our GraphQL client. Here we'll go ahead and import GraphQL client from GraphQL request. Then we'll export a new constant and we'll call this client. Here we'll instantiate GraphQL client and we'll pass it the endpoint to our API. Here I'm just going to be using a simple GraphQL shopping cart API that allows us to add items to the cart, update them, remove them, and get all of the metadata such as subtotal, formatted amounts, and more. Because we're using a Next.js application, we'll be using the underscore app.tsx convention to wrap our application with the context SWR. So inside of this file, I'm going to import SWR config from SWR. Then inside of my application, I'm going to wrap this with SWR config. Now inside of here, this takes a value. And inside of here, this object, we will be passing a custom fetcher. This is optional because you can specify custom fetches every time you use SWR. But because we're going to be using the same API and GraphQL, we can abstract this into the global fetcher. So above, let's create a very simple fetcher. Here, this will take two arguments. The first argument will be our query. The second will be our variables. Then we'll pass this to client.request. Client is the GraphQL client we just created and we can pass along the query and variables here. Now that's set, let's go ahead and create our very first GraphQL query that we want to execute instead of our header. If we open our header file, we can see here that we're displaying a total inside of the link that goes to our cart. We want to make this value come from the API that we've just instantiated. First, I'm going to create the file GraphQL and inside of here, I'm going to create a new const and I'm gonna call this cart fragment. Here we'll give the fragment a name of cart and this will be on the cart type. And for each of our carts, we'll get the ID, total items, and all of the items in the cart. We'll also get the name, ID, quantity, any images of these items. We'll get the formatted amount for our line total. Then for our cart, we'll get the subtotal formatted amount. Now let's create our first query and we'll call this get cart by ID. This query will take a variable ID and we'll call the query cart passing in that same ID as the variable. Then all that's left to do is spread on the cart fragment. And we'll need to include this below cart fragment. Now we've got everything we need to do to make our first request with SWR to our GraphQL API. Back inside of our header, let's now go ahead and import use SWR from SWR. Then we'll import get cart by ID and we'll import client from our exported GraphQL client. Now, instead of our component for header, we can simply call out to use SWR. We can pass along the query and the variables. He will call out to use SWR. He will pass the key for SWR to store the data. Because our query includes a variable, we want to make this key dynamic. So the value can change based on the query that we provide. So he will need to pass an array and the first item will be get cart by ID. And the second will be an object that contains our cart ID. This cart ID is exported from a file constants. Now we'll grab from the response from use SWR data and error. We next want to check the status to see whether this is actually loading. 
So we'll create a new variable called loading and here we'll check to see if there's no error and there is no data. Now instead of our link for our cart, let's check to see if we're loading. If we are, we'll display nothing. And if we aren't, well, we'll simply return a fragment here that includes the total. Instead of having the static amount for our cart total, we can now fetch from the data the subtotal formatted amount. If you've watched previous episodes where we've covered GraphQL type safety, type document node and others, you'll be pleased to know that useSWR also supports generics. So this means we can pass to the arguments of useSWR the shape in which the data will be returned. Here we'll specify the type for our formatted response. Here we'll type the value formatted as a string. Now we'll get type safety when working with this. You should check out a video on GraphQL code generator on how you can automatically create these types from your API. Now back inside of our browser, we can see here that the application made a request to api.cartql.com. This is the GraphQL client that we set up, so we know that this is working correctly. If we preview the response, we can see that we're using the cart with the ID WTF, and we have all of the data returned, as well as that important formatted subtotal amount. And we can see here that this value now is reflected in our header. You may have noticed as I click back into the application that more requests are being made to the API. This is one of the benefits of SWR, is when I change focus within my browser, it will automatically silently in the background make a request to check that everything is up to date and the data is 100% correct. You can disable that with some of the config in SWR if you needed to. The next thing that we'll do on our product display page is wire up the functionality of Add to Cart. Now let's export a new GraphQL mutation. We'll call this Add to Cart. This mutation Add to Cart will take an input variable and this input is of the type Add to Cart input. We'll then invoke the Add Item mutation and we'll pass along that input variable and we'll return everything instead of our GraphQL fragment. So here we can see that we have a query that returns everything for our cart. And when we add to the cart, this also returns everything from the cart type. This is because both the cart query and the add item mutation both return the type cart. And don't forget to add cart fragment like we did before. Inside of our product page, we have a button that on click calls the function add to item. It's inside of here, we'll make a request to our GraphQL API to add the item to the cart. Here we'll call await client dot request. And this is the client that we created previously. And we can see here that this is automatically being imported for us. Inside of here, I'm going to pass that add to cart mutation. And then we need to satisfy the input arguments. So we'll provide input. And here we'll provide the cart ID. And the value here we'll import from our constants file. Instead of repeating cart ID twice, here we can reflect cart ID to itself. Then we'll pass along the ID for our product which we get from the params to our page. Then we'll pass along the name of our product and also the price. Lastly, we want to pass the image for our product. Our product only has one image, but our API expects an array. So here we can provide an array and include that single image URL. Now, if we make a GraphQL request, this will await a request to our GraphQL API, adding the item to the cart and all should be good. Now back on our product display page, if we open the network tools, and then we click add to cart, we can see here that we're making a request to our API. We can see here that we successfully added the item to the cart and the response now includes the formatted total. If we scroll up in our application, we can notice here that this is not up to date. If we go back to our homepage, we can see as we navigated back to the homepage that SWR automatically refetched that query that we'd previously wrote inside of the header. Now it would be useful as we add items to the cart for this subtotal to be automatically updated. We need a way to tell SWR what the cache key looks like. Thankfully, we know what the key of the cart is and what the query will be, so we can automatically mutate that inside of our code. Instead of our code for our product display page, let's go ahead and import mutate from SWR. Instead of our function handler for add item, let's call mutate and we'll pass it the key. Here we'll pass get cart by ID and we'll pass the object with the ID inside of there with the cart ID. This is the key value inside of our SWR cache that we want to update. Then we can provide the new data for that key. We'll make this an async function because we'll be making a request to our GraphQL API. 
So inside of here, we can simply return that new key object. From the request that we make to our API, I will fetch add item from the response, and then we'll simply return a new object with the cart object, add item. So now when we call our add item handler, we mutate the key, which is our query, and the combined ID, then we make a GraphQL request, and from the response, we update the new key value with the card object. Now, one other thing that we'll need to do here is I'm going to pass false as a third argument to mutate. This false Boolean will prevent SWR from fetching from our API again. Now, let's go back to our page. And if we click add to cart, we can now see in the header that the cart subtotal is being updated automatically. And now to finish our application, we'll add a way to mutate the cart when we remove an item from the cart. So inside of the page for our cart, I want to do a few things. The first will be to get all of our cart items, and the second will be to remove that cart item. So now let's grab the code from before, and inside of our cart page, we'll perform that same request to use SWR. So let's go ahead and import use SWR, and then we'll import get cart by ID, and we'll import the cart ID constant. Then further on down, We'll use the loading state to check to see whether the cart query is loading. And if it is, we'll return a simple message, loading. Otherwise, instead of here, instead of just iterating through a empty array, we can now iterate through the cart items. We can now see that our cart has successfully requested all of the items using that get cart by ID. Both the header and the cart page use that same key from SWR to get the value. We can see here that it returned the data for our cart. And because we're making the same query with the same cart ID, the cart page or the cart header can use the same value to prevent multiple requests made to your API. Let's now finish our application for removing items. Before we do that, let's export a new GraphQL mutation and we'll call this remove from cart. The mutation remove from cart will take an input argument and this will be called remove cart item input. Then we'll call remove item and we'll pass that all important input argument. Then we'll spread cart into the response. And finally, we'll include the cart fragment instead of our template literal. Now with that done, we can import remove from cart instead of our cart page. Now, just like we did before, we'll call mutate from SWR and we'll pass the query using the get cart by ID query. We'll pass the ID for our cart, which is the constant WTF. And then for the second argument, this will be an asynchronous function that we can use to make a request to our API. We'll destructure from the response, remove item. And these are API specifics that aren't too important for this tutorial. Then we'll pass along our mutation, remove from cart. And then as the variable, we'll pass along our input argument. Then all that's left to do is return the new value for our key by providing the new state for our cart. Then let's add false to prevent SWR from automatically refetching that data. Now if that's saved and everything imported successfully, let's head back to our application and remove an item. And we can see here that our subtotal in our header has successfully been updated using the state from our mutation cache. So there we have it, a very simple way to use SWR to manage GraphQL requests. One of the biggest things of SWR is the automatic revalidation. This makes sure that your application has the most up-to-date correct data from your API. And if you're using it with GraphQL, it's great. And as we've seen, we manually revalidated the data using the mutate function. There are a lot more things that you can do with SWR and GraphQL that I recommend that you check out. If you're using a combination of server-side rendering, Next.js or anything else, then I'd recommend having a look at how you can set default data when pages are rendered on the server. So you're not having to wait for requests to happen on the client. You can provide the client with some default data, then SWR can automatically revalidate that on the client. We'll cover more about this, pagination, prefetching, and much more with SWR and GraphQL in another video.